Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Harebrain Games, The Week in Games. This is my weekly segment I do about once a month, covering all manner of things related to the hobby of board gaming. Welcome, welcome. I hope you're all doing well. Up here in the Pacific Northwest, the summer has been stellar for heat lovers. And I love heat. All those around me melt. I feel so... Spelt? No. Anyway, um, we've had record temperatures. Uh, a few weeks ago, we had 111 here, right here. It wasn't that hot in other places around, but in my particular part of this of this place, it was 111. We've had lots of days of 80 degrees plus. We did have some rain last week, boo, but necessary. Uh, and now we're popping up for another hot spell with more 100 degree temperatures. So. Um, also, right now, we're kind of in between, we're in that slushy spot between vaccination and uh, new virus variants, and so we have game stores opening up in the area, and I hope in your areas there are at least some some human-to-human uh, -human traffic and interaction on the gaming front. Um, I'm glad to see the food and the drinks are flowing, and gamers are congregating wherever they can for as long as they can. Um, I'm stoked to have the local haunts open and operating again. Uh, as some of you have noticed, there's a shipping delay phenomenon um, that has been markedly disruptive for all markets. Uh, you know, I some of my Kickstarter games have been delayed so much that, and it's getting so bad that I may have to resort to going back to playing games that I already own. But let's hope it doesn't come to that. Anyway, let's get to the news up this broadcast to bring you a special oh so oh so not so special report when i did this week in review it was actually august 10th and uh my intro and the news and such some of it's still relevant some of it's not i will say that we have had to go back to masks and uh we're not quite so open in the in the gaming venue as we could a lot of other things have happened well um, as not well, not well at all, as well, uh, the weather has tanked, it's now rainy, so much for my 100 degree heat, oh well, uh, I hope you all are doing well, in the three weeks that have transpired since I last did my update, we've had obviously some global issues that have kind of rocked uh, certain people's world, including my own, I continue to pray for those in Afghanistan, I don't, I have, um, associates, and, uh, people I know in uh, in the Middle East and and uh, so I keep them in my prayers and I hope if anyone else has been affected directly or indirectly like know that I'm I'm thinking about you in this very very dark time no matter which side of the spectrum or whatever's going on whatever political actions are happening there are people that are not doing well and so uh, again this is my one of the reasons why I have delayed in publishing this is because of the fact that I have kept my attention focused on the safety and care of people that I know directly and one degree indirectly from previous projects I've worked on and such. So uh, with that, let's keep on going to the news. All right, news on the front. We have a Fort expansion. Fort is a fun, frolicky little game that deals with kids building forts. You know, why not? And it has a new dogs and cats expansion. Uh, Fort is on my simmer list. I'm not entirely certain I want to dive in yet, oddly enough, but I probably will. It's on my wish list. Maybe a good Christmas present, so pardon the twinklies there. And in an oddity of adolescent compulsion, we have a pop-up adventure journey. The Wonder Book Dungeon Crawler Interactive Narrative Game. Think Mice and Mystics-ish. Um, pop-up books I haven't seen as a game, or I mean, gameplay feature yet. Uh, and so I'm kind of curious how it's going to work out. Um, next we'll probably see books, you know, board games with books where you have to like stick your hand through the big, the big, pa the big block pages and feel the fur and feel... You know, Anyway, we'll say um, we already have a game like that called Dr. Shark, if you ever want to look back in the annals of history and see a texture-based uh, board game. So, G.I. Joe is making a comeback with a fully cooperative game from T.C. Petty III. Now, uh, it's from Renegade, and the core box is going to be available for pre-order soon. Loved a G.I. Joe growing up. 
thinking I might take a risk on this, thinking I might do that. So now the news on Mars has just finished its Kickstarter for an expansion, Alien Invasion. Uh, it looks astounding. It was funded in minutes. I had no small part thanks to me. Well, okay, in small part thanks to me. But I'm looking forward to that. If those people want to pre-order it uh, post Kickstarter, that opportunity, I believe, will present itself. And finally, from the makers of Splendor. We have Soul Raiders, uh, which is a quirky narrative sprawling universe of a game that's intent on fast-tracking players through a memorable journey. Uh, the fact that it's from the Splendor dude should not dissuade people who found Splendor entertaining, but not necessarily life-changing. My wife loves Splendor. She's probably played four or five hundred games of Splendor. Uh, I like Splendor. It's okay. It's a nice, quiet, jolly romp through uh, thick, thick chit token heck um but i didn't find it you know, it wasn't like enthralling but hey people who like it like it people who don't well, that's okay too uh but mark andre who made it is known for uh kind of streamlined focus designs he's done a couple games since then majesty which kind of was under the radar it's okay okay does sign and barony which i actually thought was a very clever area control game uh didn't get a lot of uh hype but it was very good but i think splendor is kind of his is a grail game that he's made but i'm very interested in this is very very different it's also very expensive comparatively speaking to splendor so but again i dived in we'll see that next year and find out am i a fool or am i fool's gold or am i gold anyway let's get to my question of the week i have two questions one it's a little quirky what is the fascination with the term Imperium? I don't know why, but lately we're seeing lots of Imperium-like gaming names. I don't know. Twilight Imperium, Imperium the Contention, Imperium Classics, Imperium Legends, Dune Imperium. I don't know. A fad? I don't know. Anyway, that's a silly question. Another question is, I have for you, is anyone but me entering into the stage of blinging? or whatever the term is now, upgrading, stylizing, <clears throat> revolutionizing, whatever. But I'm finding that I'm actually, thanks to adventure tactics, I'm finding that there is a whole subculture of gaming, uh, board gaming uh, blingification. And, you know, in the past, I would always be like, if I've got money to upgrade components, why don't I just use that money to buy a cool new game? Well, I'm finding that as games get more pricey and I'm, buying maybe less frequently. I'm not just buying stuff like I used to because it was on sale or it might be okay or whatever. I'm actually finding myself increasing component qualities. I ordered for Dune Imperium the fancy expansion I um, that they, or not expansion, but the upgrade of the pieces. I, uh, I ordered um, new player mats for adventure tactics made of wood. Uh, I don't know. I'm sort of starting to get into the feel where I'd like to take games that I really feel are worth the investment and actually beef them up a bit. How are others doing? Are you kind of in the stage where you think that, yeah, you don't really need to upgrade a game unless it's really, really, really the one uh, or, or what? So let me know what you think. For me, I think cubes are just not enough anymore and I'm kind of looking past them. But hey, that could just be that I'm reaching a certain section of my board gaming life curve that involves that but all right enough of that let's get to my three games speaking of imperium here's imperium classics those of you who might have seen the review i did a bit ago which i kind of was expecting to release after this week in games but the weeks went by Anyway, Imperium Classics and its uh, big brother Imperium Legends are a new game, uh, hard to get a hold of right now from Osprey Games, uh, by Nigel Buckle and David Surtsey. And uh, I love this game, but it is not a simple card game. Go into it like you're going into a massive strand strategy game, and you'll be a little bit more equipped to handle the fact that there's a lot going on in in a in there's a lot going on let's just go with that on the other hand there's summer camp this is a target exclusive currently two to four players from phil walker harding uh known for games like other games uh in this you're basically at summer camp you're going to go down three tracks of badge accruement and you're going to try to be the first one to get across all three bridges or all three paths of bridges to get your badges and your merit badge and your archery badge and your didn't get beat up more than 17 times badge. Winner! 
Um, but check that out, Summer Camp. It's actually very inexpensive. I got mine for $24, and I think it's easily worth that. I think I'll be pulling that out pretty much every summer. It's got some nice nostalgic artwork to it, too. Did I review a game without reviewing a game? Ugh. And finally, Damnation No Ruination. This is a uh, area uh, people on a map uh, kind of, uh, of game where you are... You are basically vying for territory. You're clawing your way across this desolate plant. You're trying to make the Khan happy. Yes, they actually named the the, the immortal person Khan and the Kanati or the Kumite or whatever you call it. So the idea is it's it is somewhat like your typical you know board dudes on the map, but it's also not in that you are really into the fray right away. There's a lot to be said for just attacking, attacking, attacking. Might be a little bit too much for some folks, but uh, I'm actually giving it giving it, uh, giving it, it a whirl, and I'm actually really liking what I see so far. There's a single-player expansion, which I also purchased separately, which looks okay, um, although I think that my, my sweet spot for this would be, like, most games involving dudes on a map is going to be like, more people to, to mock and cajole. Alright, that's enough. It's time for the Tim Machine. Nineteen ninety-three. That's right. Nineteen ninety-three. Yes, we'll go with that. Uh, top story was the formation of the European Union. I would love to hear from some of my friends in Europe how they feel that the European Union has benefited or not benefited in the many, many years since then. I'm curious, being being an outsider across the pond, I'm always curious what people there have to say about, you know, the impact that the EU has had uh, on Europe. Top movie, Schindler's List. Definitely not uh, a good, not a summer flick. This one's legit and uh, one of my hollowed favorites. Uh, the song was Whitney Houston's I Will Always Love You. Ooh. ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, the book was The Bridges of Madison County by Robert Waller, eventually made into a, a movie with, I believe, Clint Eastwood. Uh, make, make my day. Uh, what did I play? Well, at that point, it was Magic the Gathering. I was all in on the Magic the Gathering. What game would I have bought if I knew then what I'd known now? I would have bought more Magic the Gathering. And what game did I want to play? Magic the Gathering. All right, on to 1994, again, with the dark themes. But the top story was Rwandan's genocide, which was a horrible, 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 horrible thing. Um, the top movie was Forrest Gump, which I have probably seen 50 times since. I know it's polarizing. Some people love it. Some people hate it. I absolutely really loved it. I really did. I Yeah, no, this was one of my top favorite movies of all time. Um, John Montgomery, uh, Montgomery sang I Swear, which was the song, which, you know, is definitely popular among the profane. Uh, book was Wings by Danielle Steele, who I've never read, and I'll take somebody's word for it. What did I play? Kingdoms from Rainer Knizia. It's a basic, very basic, as mathematical, solid as math, solid in the math, as all minor games are kind of game. What game would I have bought if I'd known then what I'd known now? I would have bought the Robin Hood game because you know me. I love me some Robin Hood. And I uh, I missed that one. So, sorry, Robin. What game did I want to play? Mouse Blaster. Yeah, definitely. And that's it. That's what we have for this week. I hope you guys are doing well. I love hearing from all of you. I really love the comments that I get. I've got some really great feedback. I've had some good constructive criticism as well. Um, I like, I really like this channel. I like that its numbers are small enough that I can try and respond to everybody that 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 uh, chimes in. I if I don't respond to you, believe me, at some point I will. Um, I just recently learned that I can. <laughs> I recently learned that I can use my YouTube dashboard to actually find comments faster. So I've been going through there. appreciate all the feedback. And uh, I'm just, you guys are great. You really are. So anyway, take care, and we'll see you next time on Hairbrain Games.